the things you say I feel there might be a little more to what I hear you say Yeah All the times you keep on speaking I know that Hello, I'm Ben Andrus and you're watching the final installment of our weekly show On The Scene. On uh, today's show we have brought in a very in the local music scene, and also he's known around the world for his company, Bedlam Society. Welcome, Joel. Thank you uh, for coming in. Thanks around the world. Yeah. Wow. I know. I, yeah, no, it's good. It is. It's true, though. It made me feel really good. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> would you uh, um, explain what you do with your production company that's based at St. Catharines? Well, we have a, uh, we have a uh, magazine, and I manage bands, Alexis on Fire, The Junction, Raising the Fawn, Dallas. And uh, we throw concerts and a festival, and we have a record label now, so a lot of stuff. So how long ago did you start Bedlam Up, and why? I started, like, I think, like four years ago, and it was just an email list, and it basically there was a, a void, and I felt the need to fill it. And uh, it kind of just developed from there. Sweet. Yeah. I'm glad that happened that way. It worked out well. Uh, <laughs> and I noticed most of your staff and the bands that you work with are close friends of yours. Do you find it easier and more rewarding to work with friends? Yes, I love it. Um, uh, it. You just have a different relationship with them, and uh, there's a trust factor there that uh, in music uh, you need, and it doesn't exist often with mm -hmm. in the, within the industry. So uh, I, I like it, you know, doing what you want to do in life and doing it with your friends. Yeah. It's pretty humbling. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what would you say would be the most difficult aspect of your job that a typical music fan wouldn't really know or be aware of? Um, being everywhere at once. I don't know, dealing with uh, organization, I guess, would, would, would uh, be the most difficult thing because uh, I'm dealing with all these different bands and concerts and my label and all this, and it's just kind of uh, organizing your time appropriately to deal with all the situations. And uh, I think that's difficult because uh, I'm not the most organized human being and I'm uh, learning to be. So, so yes, what that. are some of the things you're doing to keep yourself organized? I recently, uh, I was trying to do it with like these like devices, and uh, I'm not really good with uh, computers. So I got a book that I can see a week on a whole and a month on a whole, and it's now working out perfectly. A paper and a pen. I'm sure. all brick and mortar. It's perfect. Well, that's good. The classic yeah. way of doing things. Yeah, completely. So you seem to have a lot on your shoulders with your production company, and you work with EMI too, don't you? Or used to? I used to work at Sanctuary Records, which was distributed through EMI, okay. which had like Black Sabbath and all those bands. So that's pretty neat. But um, no, I don't. I don't. I work for myself now. But like my label's distributed through Universal Records. So I bet and you've made quite a few contacts there too. Is that how a lot of it started? When uh, a lot of it started, just um, a lot of major labels and people weren't really dealing with the music that I was into. So like I said before, it's just of filling a void, and I, I filled it out pretty good mm -hmm. and uh, you know with Alexis and all these bands so they kind of uh, start paying attention to you as you keep on doing your thing and it grows right so yeah it all came from that I guess that's cool and you yeah. work with the Junction now too which is really I love name. those boys oh, yeah, they're awesome they're my favorite they're the most sweetest human beings ever yeah for sure what would you say about your top five favorite albums are like if you had to pick I know there's really yeah I know you have a yeah. extensive music collection of yeah um, so. there's all different um, this is just Soundgarden, I think uh, Bad Motor Finger, uh, I, I, Kiss Destroyer, um, I, there's so many, I don't know man, there's, that's just, I have like 5,000 albums and they all mean something to me, right? Because yeah. I don't know, every time you purchase an album it's just like a, it's like you're building a soundtrack to your life, right? So there's always a meaning behind every yeah, album. Like high fidelity in a way. Like uh, yes, very yeah, much so. And I just bought that movie yeah, totally uh, yesterday. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome, yeah. that's a great movie. Um, so Alexa on Fire, their brand of music hasn't really been accepted into the mainstream that well, but you managed to let the world know about these guys, and they've been touring North America, uh, overseas too, <coughs> um, and uh, they have a fan base, which is just humongous, so hmm. can you explain kind of like how you got Alexa on Fire where they are now? I did everything. I wrote their songs. Well, I know you're behind the scenes. No, I'm actually lying about that. Um, we just basically uh, had them play a lot. And uh, just played. They played shows. We didn't concentrate on anything else outside of playing shows and them being the best live band that they can be and writing good songs. And then if you can do that, you're able to do everything else around it. Because uh, basically it always comes down to the music, right? Mm -hmm. So they're a bunch of uh, 
really strong. They have strong personalities and they write really great music. Well, they put on amazing and they put on an amazing yeah. show. So it made it it made it really easy to uh, break them out. Uh, speaking of uh, live shows, we had our uh, videographer Brianne go on the scene to a local St. Catharines bar to videotape a show this past weekend. Oh wow! So we'll go to that Good. insert now, I believe. Fantastic. That was exciting. Um, so why would you believe it is important for the Niagara region to have a booming music scene? I think it's important everywhere. Well. Because um, it keeps me in a job. <laughs> no. Um, why is it important? It just is. It's nice. It gives like an all ages shows, basically. It gives uh, outlets for kids to go see bands, and it's a safe outlet. And it gives kids, you know, to express themselves through music and all that fun stuff. All that fun stuff. The fun stuff. Right. I don't know. It's just important. And you me. and uh, Steve Stumble put on Scene Fest every year too. And uh, do you believe you may expand it? Maybe get more out of town bands come in? Or yeah. This year, uh, uh, this year we've we've already started working on it, and it's the 10th anniversary this year. And we're working on getting outdoor stages. And uh, we usually run it out of our pocket, and uh, we don't we don't we don't pay rent for a couple months. And uh, it's it's tough, and we fight. But this year we're trying to get some bigger sponsorships so I can, I can uh, not have to pay for it. And uh, yeah, we're just bringing in bigger bands and just all the bands are getting bigger themselves anyways and Bedlam's getting bigger and the label and all this. So I think it'll just inherently be a lot bigger. Mm. So yeah, we're bringing in out of town bands and, and uh, there's going to be some surprises that I can't really talk about yet because they're not confirmed, but I'm excited. I'm excited. If you're, if you're excited, I'm pretty sure it'll, good. Be, it'll be good. I, I trust your excitement. So uh, you usually set up the most rocking shows too in St. Catharines and the other cities too, and brought in a lot of impressive talent. What have you say? Some of the most impressive talent you have brought in have been? It's all impressive. Well, <laughs> no. someone that you're just like, it's wow, I can't believe I'm um, like watching this guy. Uh, on my Bedlam anniversary this year, uh, the lead singer of Quicksand and Gorilla Biscuits uh, and and rival schools. Walter came in and did an acoustic set, which when I was a kid, uh, growing up, I, when I wanted to do stuff with music, I always wanted to work with Quicksand. And I got to hang out with him and uh, do a show for him. And, and my label is named after one of his songs, and he dedicated that song to me. And that was pretty, uh, I had to take a walk after that one. That one was pretty huge. Um, one line drawing playing in St. Catharines was really amazing because he was in Far as well, yeah, which was Jonah, really, amazing. Yeah, and I got to work with Fishbone, which I grew up on, and uh, I uh, hugged I hugged the guys from Clutch on stage at the Opera House when I did a show with them. Gave the singer a big kiss on the cheek. That was nice. So yeah, I've worked with a lot of bands that I've uh, I've absolutely loved. I also heard that you had Thanksgiving dinner with Thursday too, isn't? Oh, Deftones and Thursday. Deftones and Thursday. <laughs> yeah. So you had Thanksgiving dinner with Deftones and Thursday. Yeah, that was fun. Well, the bass player from Deftones. Oh. But still, yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah, that no, was really cool. Yeah, like, they're just, everyone's just really nice, you know? Mm. And they all come from, like, a punk rock scene, which means it's just, like, a unity kind of thing, and there's no ego, so everyone has a good time. That's awesome, for sure. Um, do you have any, like, tips that you have, maybe, to other promoters that are booking shows? or uh, Be honest. Don't rip off bands. That's my tip. Good tip. Yes. 
And do you have any other thing? Do you have like a checklist before you do your own shows too for bands? Like maybe like we have like a, like bands will submit a rider, right? And then it's like food and drinks or whatever, and you kind of go through that. And then we have a breakdown of expenses and taxes and all that. So we punch in all the numbers and do all that fun stuff. But there's no uh, crazy checklist. It's yeah. me usually just running around with Trisha and Rohan and like, oh shit, oh, not about to say that. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, trying to find uh, find what they need. And now uh, just making sure the show goes on Smooth. time. Oh, so that calculator. Calculator's good. Calculators are yeah. good. All right. Uh, and I know Bedland has a lot of contests, too. <coughs> on the scene, we had their, our own little contest here. No, oh, right. I guess we're going to go to an insert of it right now. Ooh. This is going to be enjoyable. Are you James Dalton? Yes. Congratulations, James Dalton. You are the winner of On the Contest to Meet a Rockstar. Oh my god. Here he is. Yeah! Come on in, you gotta play me some songs. A little walking music? <laughs> This groovy teacher I used to have, I still do sometimes. It's just not the same. I loved you as a teacher. You say, yeah, Alicia, 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 where are you now? I only see you at lecture class. Alicia. I miss you more than I miss my ex lives. It's just so much. It's just so much. It's just so much. Red puddle, stepping on him in his car. Mud puddle, no need for school. Red puddle, no need for school. To get my hands all wet, get my little coat brown. Oh, that's not mud, that's poo. This has been On the Scene with Gonna Be a Rockstar. Back to you, Ben. Jeff finds out! Yeah! Wow, that was oh so exciting. <laughs> all right, Joel, we're we'll back here with Joel now, too. Hey. And uh, maybe would you like to tell us what the first concert was that you ever attended? First concert I attended. Oh, uh, I remember the first real concert I attended. I attended like those like fair things that were like the monkeys will play or something, but I don't really consider those my first real concerts. I think it was like in 1990, I think ish. Uh, I went and saw Ugly Kid Joe at the Hideaway, and it was a 19 plus show. And my mom took me. Sweet. And I think I don't know. I would have been. I don't know how old I was, but uh, yeah, I think that was like my first like show where I was in a pit. And uh, the lead singer jumped on me, and I, and I touched his bum. I was like, I can't believe I'm touching Whitfield Queen's bum. <laughs> and he was like on top of me. That's awesome. And that was really cool. Sweet. And uh, what was the first show you're, yourself you promoted? Um, I used to help out with a lot of shows at this club called Mind Bomb in St. Catharines that existed for five years. But I didn't overly control the whole entire show. So the first show I actually overly controlled was at Biohazard in, uh, in, at Fun 50, whatever it's called now, Moose and Goose right. or... Whatever. Well, cool. That's awesome. Yeah. And well, thank you for coming out. And uh, hey, good time. Really nice talking thank to you. Anyways. Thanks. And, and now the credits. Mm -hmm. I think there might be a little more to all the things you say. I feel there might be a little more to what I hear you say. Yeah. All the times you keep on speaking, I know that you're hiding something special. Can't you just explain to me how you really feel? I know that you're hiding something from me. I just hope that it is your love. You might be wrong. But you could be right beside me